Hi, I'm Trevor with Hi-Viz Shooting Systems. We're going to install a set of sights on a uh, Smith & Wesson Shield EZ9. And first we want to, of course, make sure that the gun is unloaded. And you do not necessarily have to take the gun apart to install the sights, but I prefer to. That way we get a much better hold on the slide when we remove the front dovetail sight. Now we have another video on fitting a dovetail sight, and we also do it on an M&P. But fitting a dovetail sight to a gun, the, the theory and the technique applies to any firearm, whether it's a semi-automatic handgun or a rifle or shotgun. And what I'm going to go through in this uh, segment is some alternate methods where I'm going to use a file. So in the first video, what we do is a lot of times dovetail sights need fitting. Matter of fact, I would expect most time they need minor fitting. The preferred fit between a dovetail sight and the uh, dovetail and the firearm maybe one to one and a half thousandths of press fit. Uh, to put that in perspective, that's about half the width of a human hair. So that's all the interference you want. So you want the sight to be slightly larger than a dovetail so you get a press fit. With a dovetail, you have angled sides and a flat bottom. What you're trying to achieve is a tension fit between those two angled sides and the bottom. So you have three points of contact which create a press fit. So normally, I would tell people to shy away from using a file to file on one of the angles for a number of reasons. One, it's difficult to maintain the, the angle of the dovetail when you're using a file. And I'm going to go through some methods that I use to, to help control that. So first, I want to see if the sight starts in the dovetail at all, and it starts a little ways. So we're going to attempt to drift it in and see how much pressure it takes. So I did use a steel punch to remove the other sight. I highly discourage people from using a steel punch to continue to use that or to install the new site. We have a lot of options for punches. You can use a brass punch. Keep in mind that a lot of times brass will transfer to the site, so I usually put tape over the tip of those to protect them. So when I install sites, if they're properly fitted, they don't need a tremendous amount of pressure to drift them into place. So I prefer to use a nylon tip punch. This one here has replaceable nylon tips that just simply unscrew out of the punch. It will take more force to drive it in with this, but if it's fit properly, this will still be adequate to drift the sight in place and you, will, you won't hurt or scratch the gun. There's really no possibility of that. So now that we've checked that the sight does fit in the dovetail slightly, I'm just going to tap it. So I've got it drifted and it's just a little bit off, but I'm starting to feel resistance from the site where I'm going to have to use more force to drift it into place. So this is the point where I would stop and I want to back the site out and I want to reduce the dovetail. The amount of force I started with where the site started drifting into the dovetail was not a tremendous amount of force, but that is the amount of force I want to continue steadily through the whole installation process. So since I had to start increasing my force, I'm going to stop and I'm going to reduce the dovetail slightly. So I'm going to remove this slide from the vise because I'm going to use the vise. I'm going to remove my wood inserts that I use. And I am going to use a post-it note. I'm just going to use that piece of paper to put on the sides of the sight blade. And like say I have a lead vise jaw. So I have the sight inverted and I'm clamping on the width of the sight blade. I'm not going to hurt the sight blade. But now I have the dovetail inverted so that I can reduce the angle on one side. So I'm going to use a file to do that. So I have two files. I have a single cut file and a double cut file. The double cut file is going to remove material faster. These have a white substance on them. We use a, a chalk on the files. So if you fill the file with chalk, it helps keep material from building up in the, in the file having to clean it. Now the unique thing about these files is that they only cut on one side. So you see teeth on this side of the file and they're smooth on the other two surfaces. Now also when we get these files new, they typically have a slight burr on the cutting edge, so I stone the two smooth sides. And what this ensures is that when you lay it flat on the top of that blade, I can go back and forth on that blade and this smooth side of the file is not going to cut. So the only part of the side I'm going to cut is the angle on the dovetail. And that's why we use these. If you have a typical three corner file that cuts on all three sides, it's very, very difficult to only cut the angle on the dovetail and not cut into the blade. So if you have a standard three corner file that cuts on all three sides, you will not be able to control whether you're, when, when you're cutting into the dovetail angle, you're simultaneously going to be cutting into the blade. I can keep the file on the bottom of the sight blade. It matches the angle on my dovetail and now I'm going to take nice even strokes and I can get a very controlled fit of the sight. 
So when we machine dovetails, we always put a corner break on these bottom corners of the dovetails. You don't want corner interference when you drift that side into place. Consequently, when I file on this angle of the dovetail, I've sharpened the corner up on this side of the dovetail. So I'm gonna place it back in the vise. <clears throat> I'm gonna take my three corner file, I'm just gonna turn it on its side and just lightly file the edge of that dovetail there just to put a slight break on it so we don't get any corner interference. So now I'm gonna check the fit on my dovetail. Well, the dovetail, the site now slides right through the dovetail. So we've removed too much material. There are several ways or means by which to fix and tighten up the site. To me, the only, what I, what I would consider the only professional method is to install a shim under the site. So what we have here is several different pieces of nylon shim stock. They're color coded because of the thickness of the shim material. So what we're gonna do is we're going to try one uh, and then if it's not thick enough, we're gonna proceed and try another one. You only wanna use one piece of shim material, but you wanna use a, a thickness that's thick enough to tighten the site up. So I'm gonna trim a piece of shim material and set it in the dovetail. And you can see that now the site will not go in over top of the shim. So I'm gonna get my nylon punch. So now you have shim material on both sides. The reason we cut a long piece of shim material is that so you can drift it over top of it, make sure that you have shim completely under the site, and then I will just score the sides of the shim material. I'm gonna remove the slide now and show you. So now you see that I've just trimmed the shim on either side of the site. Nice and clean, you can't see it. The site is not quite centered, so as I did with the rear side, I would check this with the dial indicator and use my drift to adjust the site back and forth just in a minor method to center it. So now I'm gonna remove this site that I shimmed and I'm gonna install another site that I have to fit with a file slightly to get it fit in. And as we showed fitting it with a file, I have another site that I fit slightly and it should press fit in without a shim. So I'm just gonna tap this site out, remove the site and the shim came out with it. So here is the site that I previously did slight fitting with a file on. So I'm gonna get it to where it starts in the gun. So now we just drift the site in place. Try to center it up as best we can. Now we're gonna take the site to the dial indicator, check the uh, centering of it and adjust it as necessary. So I'm gonna set the indicator on the side of the blade, zero it, and then we will check the other side and we are about 15,000 soft, so we're gonna make a slight adjustment. So I like to position the slide in the vise that the direction I need to move the site, I'm always driving into the fixed portion of the vise. That's why I have the slide reversed. So I wanna only drive on the dovetail of the site. So I've moved the site just a little. Now we're gonna check it again. All right, so I've made a slight adjustment. We'll zero the Dial indicator on that side. Check the other side. We are 2 thousandths off, which is close enough to being centered. We can't get much more, much closer than that. Another thing we want to reinforce always is that when you're drifting sights in, and in our first dovetail fit video, we go over the use of some sight pushers. Uh, sight pushers are fine. They're okay to use, provided they work in accordance with uh, the construction of the site. So we must remember that a site pusher or a site device that attaches to the slide and uses a mechanical pusher to drive the blade is, is only another tool to install the site once it's been properly fitted. So whether you use a hammer and a punch or, or a uh, site pushing device, the site should always be checked for fit and fit appropriately if need be before installation. Now another thing we want to reinforce is that with all front sites, I would say, but certainly with fiber optic tritium sites, where a large portion of the metal has been relieved from the site blade, the site blade is not a structural part of the site that can be used to push the site into place. So we must always drive on the dovetail only. So the dovetail is the press portion or the portion of the site that gets the press fit. So that is where we wanna drive. If we drive on the blade, we're creating a lot of leverage on that dovetail when we try to press it in and what you're gonna end up doing is either collapsing, bending or breaking the site blade in some manner. 
So to make sure that no matter how you install it or what tools you use to install it, you always drive on the, on the dovetail only. The same would apply to a rear dovetail sight. Now in this particular gun, the dovetail sight slips in and has screw to retain it. Now if this was a press fit dovetail, you would apply the same method. You would want to drive on the dovetail. Now some sights, this one is slightly inset from the dovetail, the side of the blade right here at the top. Some of them are smooth on the sides. So you really want to drive right on that side of the solid face. There's a lot more steel or a lot more material in the rear sight, so they don't really suffer the damage like the front sights do. Anytime you drive on a front dovetail sight blade, you really run the risk of damaging the sight. So that's it for the installation on this 9EZ. Now we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the gun, put in the barrel, guide rod. Make sure it functions properly. And there you have your installed sights on the 9EZ.